Amar, thanks a lot for giving this excellent uh, demystifying uh, analysis of the physics and science and economics behind the spectral CT. And uh, I think I have only thing left to show is the cases. <laughs> he has explained uh, a lot of things uh, on it. And uh, I have a few disclaimers. This is my personal view. In no way, form, it represents a view of Louisiana State Health Science Center, Louisiana State University, and University Medical Center in New Orleans. And as everybody knows, this uh, presentation is sponsored by Philips. And what I love about Philips as an imager, a spectral scanner, is that it's always on. So for the workflow, it's great, because I don't have to tell technologists that, OK, do dual energy protocol or do a conventional CD protocol. And uh, there are less chances of mistakes. And uh, secondly, it is good for the patient because there is no additional radiation uh, that that patient receives. So it is dose neutral. And uh, it is compatible with large body habitus. And I can tell you the other systems, uh, they get challenged when the patient body habitus, is, uh, BMI is more than 23. And uh, this is the image reconstruction of my standard uh, cardiac CT image reconstruction. As you see here, um, Everything is very similar to the conventional, except for that there is one series which Philips called SPI. This is spectral-based imaging series, and this is always there. And we can actually uh, um, have a template where the scanner would automatically generate this series, so technologist doesn't have to even press a single button to generate this series. So in my routine practice, I would look at the conventional images, and if I have a doubt, I have to just load up this SPI series, and I have a spectral data available for me to analysis. And now this, how this helps me, and uh, this series is loaded up either in the spectral CT viewer, or I can also use a comprehensive cardiac viewer for analysis. Now, let's see this case. This is uh, uh, not uncommon to have a filling defect in the left atrial appendage on your scanner. And uh, most of the time, it would be flow artifact. But how sure you can be on the conventional images? So other option is to send patient for, to do echo and look for whether this, uh, this is a thrombus there or not. You can also do MRI and uh, look for thrombus or not. Or if you happen to be scanner at that time, which most of us are not, um, you can scan the patient again, and then you then you have done a second run of the scanning. Patient got double dose, or if your technologist is astute, picks up uh, this finding and would scans the patient again. But anyways, patient is getting double dose. Other solution, which I call is the 10 second solution, is load up the SBI series, and you have this uh, this map this mapping, and in fact, you can have your presets. So these images would come, these maps would come automatically. So this is the conventional image. This is virtual non-con. That means virtually we have removed the iodine contrast using the dual energy effect spectral effect from the image. And the bottom line, bottom right is the iodine density map. And this is the fusion map. So here we see that there is presence of iodine in the contrast, this is the this is I use as my background as a as a non uh, as a fat which does not have any contrast in it. So it is a little brighter, a little bit more purplish compared to the fat. And if I'm still not sure, I can drop a ROI in that area, and it gives you the amount of iodine in that in that defect. So it is 1.27 milligrams per ml of iodine. So I have no doubt that this is a flow artifact, not a thrombus. So this is a 10 second solution. And important thing is that it also saves, one thing it is saving time. We don't have to get another test done. Second thing is it is so convenient for the patient. The patient doesn't have to go through this process that they have to get something additional imaging done. And we are also preventing radiation if we had to rescan the patient. Now let's look at another patient. This patient has a small cell lung carcinoma with multiple organ metastasis. Now CT scan shows this on the conventional images. Now on conventional image, I can challenge you, it's very difficult to tell whether this is <laughs> thrombus or this is actually metastasis. And but again, within less than 10 seconds, you can pull up your SPI series and get these maps. And here you can see there is presence of iodine in it. You drop ROI, it is 1.5 centimilligram per ml, problem solved. 
if you do not have this spectral data available to you on the fly, then you have to do cardiac MRI to, uh, to basically confirm whether this is a thrombus or this is, uh, this is a mass. And imagine if it is, uh, it's at 4 p.m. on Friday evening, <laughs> At, at our center, we don't do uh, cardiac MRIs uh, uh, on the weekends. So yeah, this, this will be additional stay for, uh, for the patient. Plus, it takes, it takes additional resources, additional time, patient inconvenience to resolve the issue, which can be resolved on less than 10 seconds. And this another patient is a 69-year-old female with urological malignancies, history of multiple central line placement, and CT or the CT shows presence of filling defect on the conventional images at the junction of the brachycephalic and the spivina cava. Now, this looks very well. To me, if I did not have spectral uh, uh, images available, to me, this would very much look like a thrombus. It's a very well-defined round and uh, very well-defined. looks like a thrombus here. So next step would be, if I do not have a spectral, to go do, try to resolve this with, uh, with ultrasound Doppler. If, uh, Doppler is not able to interrogate that area, then to do a repeat CT scan with delayed images or maybe try to do MRI. But if you have spectral data available, load that up on the viewer, and it shows presence of iodine problem solved, and um, clinicians are happy to know this, that this is not a thrombus, but just a flow artifact. And uh, this patient has uh, perihilar hyperdensities, I mean, you can always go back and do a non-con CT and try to find out whether this, this is calcium or this is vascular malformation or enhancing masses. But if we have spectral CT data available, just load that up and you see on the virtual non-con, this is calcium, this is not iodine. Still, if somebody is skeptical, hmm, maybe it is some overlap, go to iodine map and this area is dark. So that shows that there is no iodine in this, these hyper, hyper dense areas. So these are calcified lymph nodes. And this patient is very dear to me, particularly this case, came with atypical chest pain. And um, the gated CT shows uh, there's a penetrating ulcer in the ascending aorta, and a few slices above, there is a linear hyperdensity in the wall. Now the question here is, is this type A dissection or this is calcification? And everybody understands here in this room the significance of type A dissection here. Uh, it will become a surgical case or very close follow-up, ICU admission. And uh, again, on the SBI series, load up that, and you see that it is actually calcium. It is atherosclerotic calcification in the wall, and there is no contrast on the, on the, uh, on the iodine map. So, Case resolved, this is atherosclerotic calcification. We don't have to worry about aortic dissection here. Another patient, uh, this is a uh, mid-chamber view, short axis view of the, of the, uh, of the left ventricle. And uh, it's difficult to say. I mean, when you're, 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 you're reading the cases, are you sure there is something going on here in the inferior and infralateral segment, or this is artifact? Is this beam hardening? Is this real? Is not real? Um, uh, so, again, <laughs> this is the 10 second solution. You run SBI, you just load up the SBI series, and, uh, uh, and there's no doubt here that this is infarction. And here is the culprit region. And I can tell you when the, there's complete occlusion, complete occlusion at the ostium, and there is a, a robust branch, that lesion can be easily missed. And uh, now it is, it is almost invariably before I call any cardiac CTA negative, I quickly run through the maps, make sure that there's no, there's no defect. If there's a defect, then I go back and look at my coronary arteries one more time. Now this is patient, very young patient, 24 year old, no history of any high risk factor for coronary artery disease. First run of the coronary arteries didn't show any significant atherosclerotic calcification or obstruction. Now this I call is a one second solution. So Philips has a product which is called Magic Glass. So when you are working on your spectral 
SBI series, there is a, there is a, uh, there is a tool which you can click on that tool and it opens up a box on the image. And it literally takes one second to see all these maps. And these can be preset depending upon what you want. And they will show up. And here it shows very faint. This hyperdensity is actually a lack of iodine contrast in this area. And this is a 24-year-old old patient. And it's hard to believe that this is infarction. So we ended up doing, and this was one of our initial experience with spectral CT. We ended up doing MRI, and in fact, there was infarction. Now, another patient looks very similar. Now, is this infarction? Or oh, this is beam hardening? Again, all these unconventional, all these look very, very similar. Again, 10 second solution. Spectral map is up. You know that there is no deficit of perfusion in the scanning. So whatever we are seeing here was actually beam hardening artifact. So no, no need to rescan the patient, no need for additional testing. And now the question occurs is, how good is this technology in challenging circumstances? Now this is a diagnostic, uh, to me, this is definitely a diagnostic CT scan done at the heart rate of 80. So the technology holds good even at a higher heart rates. Now another challenging patient, and I can, uh, I can say that uh, uh, the source-based dual energy system would be challenged to scan this patient for the, for the coronary analysis. And this is a BMI of 30.6. And I give you that image looks grainy. They, had, they would look grainy because the patient is so large. But can we do material decomposition, which Amar has mentioned, even at BMI of 30.6? And can we do it reliably? And that's what this case shows that these plaques look almost similar on a conventional image, but when you do the decomposition, you see this is almost wholly composed of calcium, but this plaque is partly calcium and partly iodine. And if you look carefully, that on the iodine map, you can see the presence of iodine. And another, if somebody looks very carefully, what is this here? Is this occluded vessel, or this is just a photopenia because of the large body habitus? And if you look on the iodine map, there is presence of iodine in that. So that is just a poor, poor iodine presence because of the large body habitus. Now this patient has double challenge. Now it's not only a big patient, but we happen to have a poor contrast bolus. Now this is, of course, I mean, this toe program was not done for the, for the, for the cardiac imaging. This was, the patient has some other clinical indication to get the full pan scan, but here this is the conventional image, and this image is after noise reduction utilizing IMR, which is iterative model reconstruction, and you can see definitely there is uh, uh, improvement in the noise. And now what do we do about the contrast? So this has low contrast, and we can virtually increase the density of iodine compared to the rest of the tissue by decreasing KEV. So on the spectral mode, we can go into what is called monoenergetic mode, and just like we have window and, uh, window and leveling, there is another pointer which basically we can change, we can go to the KV of as low as 40 to as high as 200. So when we go towards the lower KV, our iodine becomes more dense compared to the rest of the tissue. And if you go to the higher KV, like at 200, then we will basically what I call bleach out the iodine out of the tissue. So in the same series, we can go from a very dense iodine to no, no iodine at all. And this is, so this way we can make our suboptimal contrast into a good contrast bolus. And we can use this actually when the patient has low GFR. And we can do half dose, which we do routinely half dose uh, 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 imaging, or we can actually go to as low as one third of the dose and enhance or make our iodine more prominent by using mono KEV at closer to the K edge, which is the K edge of the iodine, closer to the 40.
And now we're going to go a step further, see how much, how far we can challenge the system. So if in this uh, patient, and this is again a large patient, and uh, images are grainy, I, I definitely give you that, and we look at uh, the plaque here, which is a kind of a dense plaque. We don't know whether this is enhancing plaque or not, which is fibrous, just a fibrous plaque or fibrous plaques with the angenesis. And uh, we dro drop the ROI, so this blue ROI is uh, on the plaque, the red or pink ROI is on the fat, and the yellow ROI is on the blood pool. Now we can generate what Phillips call is uh, HU attenuation plot. So this, it is just one scan, but we can draw plots showing attenuation, mean attenuation to the different KEV levels. And this one, which is the uh, red one or pink one, is on the fat and it shows this curve. And that yellow one is the curve of the iodine or blood pool. And we see that our, pl our, uh, our plaque shows curve, which is closer to the iodine. So we presume that this is an enhancing plaque as a fibrous uh, plaque with enhancement. So uh, in summary, I can, uh, so, and uh, uh, Manny would tell more about it, but the, it, so all the spectral CTs, all the dual energy CTs are not same, and particularly the, there are two groups, source-based and detector-based. And detector-based um, CT, spectral CT, has definite advantage. It is always on. Secondly, it is dose neutral. And thirdly, it can be, it can, uh, uh, it is, it is c compatible with large body habitus. And best part is, it's a, it's a 10 second solution to most of the problems which you see in the cardiac imaging. Now back to Manny for, for conclusion.